today in Canada. Everything is blooming. Everything looks good. Trees are all blooming. Everything smells nice. Soon the garden will get planted. There's a bird. I see you, birdie. Bathing in the aquatic mint. Um, those are solar hanging lanterns. They all eventually fade white. So even if they're colored now, like the beautiful yellow one, uh, it'll probably go white. But they're really pretty at night. All these uh, hanging stuff, they're solar. And they really make everything fun at night. There's the big John old koi. And over here I have the yerba manzas coming back. These are the roots of the yerba manza. It uh, makes a white very smelly cone flower. I just love the yerba manza. You can see all the shoots here. They'll be coming back. And over there is a massive amount of aquatic mint. It's a weed. It jumps out of the pot. It was actually never in that pot. It just invaded that pot. That pot is supposed to be a rush, a bull rush. The rush is still growing. And behind the rush, that's my... Uh, that's my onion chives I eat. And I keep them up high, the onion chives, so I can just pick them that way. Bear can't pee on them. And soon the garden will be planted and I'll put the little fence up to keep the bad bear out. And those balls are spinning. Look at that beautiful flower. It's from the superstore. I don't know, I just picked them up. They have them in different colors. There's another pink one right there. I don't know, I just thought they were really pretty. Since the rain and everything, these little violas are coming nice. And this is the pond that I slipped the new liner into. I kept the same edge, it's still fine. I just uh, added uh, on this side, this is the rattlesnake board that I got uh, from out uh, where the rattlesnakes are. In the middle of nowhere, it's well weathered and beautiful. And there's some koi down there, mad as can be because I moved some of them from the upper pond. And then I got four new baby ones. The light's not shining right, so I can't show you right now. Because the light is hiding. It's peekaboo sun right now. The trees are starting to fill in. So, yeah, things are starting to look pretty good. I've got some tomatoes there I was watering. I need to tidy up a bit more junk. I got rid of a lot of the weeds on the path. And I'm going to get fresh sand and groom the path. And this is the powerful yellow flag water iris. It's the only iris that is a true water plant and can grow uh, in depths of three feet and just this is actually a floating uh, mass. It's a massive root ball. There's no pot. There hasn't been a pot there or soil for at least 20 years. I got this yellow flag back in 1991. I've hacked it and divided it over the years. And now it's just too big. I can only take pieces off the edge because it's so big. And you think it looks large here, but the root structure is very huge and takes up half the pond there but it's a powerful cleaner it's a powerful sedge sedges are the most powerful for photosynthesis filtration 
Sedges are plants with a spear-shaped leaf like cattails, rushes, irises. Although this yellow flag, I bought it years ago uh, at the garden center, is now a noxious weed, it's been declared. And they no longer want it in Canada, but mine's too big to remove. And it's such a powerful cleaner, I'm not going to take it out. It really cleans the pond. And soon it's going to bloom. It'll be covered in yellow blooms. This yellow flag will have hundreds of yellow blooms. It'll be beautiful. And then it grows as tall as the fence there. This is spring. It's just started growing. It'll get so big where I'm standing here, all it'll be like way up to here. And then it'll shade and the roots just reach down into the bottom of the pond and suck all the dirt up. Underneath the yellow flag, it's surprisingly clean. The big root system just sucks everything up. Like I said, it's not in any soil, it's a massive root ball. It just takes everything directly out of the pond. So it really helps to keep everything tidy and natural naturally clean. And that is today from the ponds that I never really clean. I only clean the filters. And the only time it gets a massive water change is once every 10 years or so. Like there, I, I haven't changed the liner in that for 20 years. I finally changed the liner in that pond. But it's all the same pond. This pond here is connecting. It goes all the way down to the gazebo there through a series of four ponds. So it's a, actually a large volume of water. What you see right here in this small pond here is only a fraction of the water capacity. As it is all one water, it flows down. Right there is the out beside the spinning ball. There's an area where the water reaches a certain uh, height and then it pours down into the next pond and the next pond and the next pond so yeah everybody looks good the water's really cleaned up cleared up because there for a while when I was mucking with it when I put the new liner in the other pond and moved stuff around on that hot day and the ponds weren't all circulating it was starting to look funny but uh, now everything's looking good again. As long as the water's always circulating. And the solar lights will come on nice too at night. They're really nice to have uh, Walmart uh, $9.99 for the, uh, these hanging colored ones, the pink one and the blue one. And they light up so nice. And then I have those uh, silver balls hanging there too. I think you can see them by the gazebo they're hanging on a fishing line and all this stuff here that's hanging and weighing, uh, swaying back and forth it helps to keep the blue hair in away right because all the strings and the dangling stuff blocks the landing path of the blue heron so if the blue heron can't land then and he can't take off he won't get your fish it's just cute or what I love this little flower it's, this is a new flower for me. I don't think I've ever actually seen it before. And they call it uh, Sundrop Mix. It's really cute. And I have it here growing with these... Uh, with my fairy nursery. Isn't that cute? I think I'll get a new stain on here on the outside. I'll stain it again. Give another coat of stain on it. Yeah, I love my pond. And it's so much easier to have them built up. Because you can walk right beside them and kneel in the water. It's easier to maintain and service. There's so many pluses to the built up pond. When you get older, it's everything's easier. Okay, You don't have to uh, reach so far and fall in. And with the built up ponds, they're above the frost level. Now, built up ponds in the north 
like in this area where we get Chinooks on, in the winter and it warms up, if your pond is totally dug below the ground, a Chinook isn't going to benefit your pond much because it's in the ground and the ground freezes six feet deep in these parts some years and then sometimes the ground doesn't defrost till April so if your pond is all right below the ground then it's going to stay cold and frozen longer plus to having the levels you don't get as much ice really I wouldn't have my ponds any other way my ponds and then you can divide and uh, section off your fish like I've got a gate here so that the koi can't come down to the goldfish pond although there is one or two koi here there's a baby koi and there's a big black koi that I can't seem to catch um, and I left them there for a while on purpose because uh, I got them from my sister and he was a he's a beautiful black koi it's just hard to see unless the light's shining so he's hard to catch and I will get him and put him in this pond eventually for this pond. And that's today where the fairies play in Canada.